So in this video I'll talk about the conclusions chapter. Uh, not many people like to write the conclusions chapter. Uh, I definitely don't and, uh, and I understand why people may, may be reluctant to, to write that chapter. It's simply that at the end of, your, of the whole process of writing your dissertation or thesis usually you can't really be bothered to write yet another chapter especially one that requires you to go through the whole work again and synthesize that work for the reader. Uh, however, and this is, I suppose, kind of a bad news, this chapter is extremely important, it's crucial in fact. So just like the introduction to your study, to your dissertation or thesis, uh, the conclusions chapter should really make an impact on your reader. This is really your final chance to highlight the importance of your work to show the reader why your, your study was a good study, why your dissertation is a good dissertation. So you should really try to make a mark on your reader. And it, it probably helps to imagine that your reader only uh, read the introduction and the conclusions. It just helps to, to imagine, uh, to see how important this chapter is and, and what to put in that chapter. It's just like if you, if you follow, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I like to say that Generally, when you write the dissertation, you should imagine your reader as somebody tired and bored and possibly not very smart. So uh, the aim of this exercise, as I often explain, is just to uh, remember, just to uh, prioritize the clarity of your work. So, so try to, by imagining that reader as this kind of a reader, it's just easier to remember where to support that reader and it's easier to remember that it should be very clear and that you should always help the reader navigate through your work. So here again, imagine that your reader did not read the, the middle section. Uh, now your conclusions is, uh, this chapter is the final chance to really uh, pass, pass your, uh, your dissertation or thesis and make it clear to the reader why this study was a good study. And therefore, I recommend including the following five points, the following five elements in your conclusions chapter. So the point number one, uh, it's important to start the conclusions chapter with reminding the reader about uh, the aims of your study, the research questions you're trying to answer, and some key findings of your study. But it's important to know that this chapter is not the summary of findings, and it's quite common to see dissertations in which uh, the conclusions chapter is essentially a summary of every single point that was discussed in, in the results and the discussion chapter and this is a very very serious mistake. Remember that this is not a summary and this is not uh, to summarize the findings is not not the only uh, and definitely not the most important aim of this uh, chapter. So uh, you do need to, to include some of the key findings but rather than listing every single finding just focus on the on the important ones the ones that will show the reader the significance of your study. So as I said, remind them of, of the problem statement, of the problem you are trying to solve, and then demonstrate uh, very, very briefly how you solve that problem. And this directly leads to the second point, the second thing you should include in your conclusions chapter, namely uh, to demonstrate the significance of your findings. So as I just said, you need to relate back to the problem statement uh, to show the reader how your findings help to solve that problem and also uh, link back to the literature review to show how your findings uh, either help to address the gap that you mentioned in the literature review or generally how they contributed to, uh, to the current state of knowledge, to the current state of research and the literature in this field. You can also show how your findings either confirm or challenge uh, the current theories in the field. Generally, why your findings are significant. Why should anyone remember and think about your findings? So again, uh, remember not to just summarize the findings, but rather uh, choose the ones that will help the reader understand how to situate your study in the broader context. Again, help the reader remember your study and uh, have this sense that this, perhaps this study in fact was important. And now point number three is to acknowledge the weaknesses and limitations of your study. And uh, this is just an optional thing because I feel that uh, the limitations section is such a fluid and flexible section that it likes to be included in different uh, places in, in different dissertations that I see. Sometimes, for example, the limitations are included at the end of the research methods chapter and sometimes they are included in the conclusions chapter. So you don't have to put the limitations in this chapter, but if you haven't, 
discuss them before you do need to mention some limitations now. I will not go into too much detail of what to include in the limitations section because I have a separate video in which I explain this section in more detail. But just to give you maybe the, the key point from that other video which I suggest that you watch is that by talking about uh, your, uh, the limitations of your study you don't need to worry that you're really talking about the, how your study was weak because that's a common feeling. I don't want to talk about my limitations. I don't want to talk about the limitations of my study because this way I'll show the reader why it was not a very good study, which is uh, not true. So as I explained in that other video, the limit, uh, your reader will know the limitations anyway. And the limitations section is, is your chance to highlight your knowledge, to show the reader that you do understand these limitations because you've done so much reading on this topic. And also to show the reader how ambitious you are because even if the study is not a, a poor study, you are saying that it could be improved in this way, in this way, in this way. So basically you're showcasing your knowledge and understanding of research. So this is a big chance for you to show how much extra you have read. This is just a quick ad break and a reminder that I offer a range of services in which I can help you improve your writing, whether it's your dissertation or a specific chapter or specific section. So these services range from proofreading and uh, reading and inserting feedback, written feedback and comments, to having a video Zoom tutorial in which we can discuss your questions and generally ways to improve your writing. So uh, feel free to, to explore uh, my website. I'll put the link under the video. If you follow that link, you can read about the range of different services that I offer. Another point that is very important is to include implications and recommendations. I just kind of joined these two together. Um, some people talk about contributions to knowledge and contributions to practice, for example. So I talked about contributions to, to research, the current research before, and now I'm talking about implications. But some people talk about contributions to knowledge, contributions to practice, which are implications. In this, however, this video and this classification, we are talking about implications separately. So it depends on what you're exploring, what you're researching, uh, what kind of implications you'll be discussing. You can usually talk about some kind of implications for practice. Again, as I said, if, if you're talking about teaching, for example, you'll be talking about maybe implications for classroom practice, for uh, curriculum planning. Uh, and you can talk about implications for, for you know, theoretical implications, let's say, uh, to policy making. Here I want to mention uh, two important points. Uh, point number one is that when you talk about implications, it's also good to, uh, to include references and literature. So many people just start talking about implications as in uh, just fan fantasizing about uh, what we can do with their findings. And it's, it's at some point it's becoming uh, quite uh, disconnected from reality. So they, they just keep on talking what we could do and how we could do this. And, and at some point the reader will just lose uh, track of what's happening. Are we just now talking about your ideas or w what is it? So it's important to also talk about what uh, others have done or have suggested doing. So this is just something that not many people remember about. So when you talk about, let's say, introducing your uh, new treatment or, or some kind of a curriculum, whatever it is, like I said, whatever the field is, then you can also say uh, these guys, so you know, Peterson 2016 has tried a similar thing in their study. So it's not just fantasizing about what we could do, but also again using the, the available literature to support, support our claims. And the second point about implications is slightly related because it's still about being realistic and using uh, some evidence from the literature, but also being realistic as in just uh, trying to, to be quite narrow, not too broad and not too ambitious. Again, I, I see very often people talking about uh, some wide implications, broad implications for policy, but while they do this, they also demonstrate their lack of understanding of policy making or lack of understanding of policies and generally lack of understanding of the topic. So try not to be too ambitious because it can actually harm you. And as I previously noted, uh, apart from implications, you should also mention recommendations. Recommendations for uh, future research. So basically by, by making these recommendations, you are demonstrating 
what else can be done it's also kind of a an additional extra chance for your uh, for yourself to demonstrate again your awareness and of perhaps you know your your uh, weaknesses of uh, your knowledge of the literature because uh, knowledge of other methods because uh, when you make recommendations you're showing that uh, you're given ideas for how and what can be explored how this this uh, study can be expanded what kind of methods can be used what kind of sample can be used what what can we do uh, to expand this uh, this research so you are both showing again the significance the importance of your study because you're showing how it can uh, can be used uh, for for other studies in the future you're showing that it's not just one study that exists in isolation and nobody will need it but actually this is something we can continue on developing and you're showing again as i said your awareness and your understanding of methods of, of the literature and finally this is a very short point uh, you should include a conclusion so you should include a conclusion in a conclusion and basically what this means is just just either some call to action or some nice reflection something to leave your reader with basically maybe address some questions that remained unanswered just leave your reader with something to think about and it's it's just a nice trick in my opinion opinion again as i said you just want your reader to remember this work because you don't know what they have read before what else they will be reading after your work so it's just it's just a way to to make sure that they remember your work somehow so these are the five things that i believe you should include remember again that this is not a summary of your findings there is so much more to your conclusions chapter i hope that you learned something new if you did please like the video to help others find it on youtube and feel free to ask me questions in the comments